Hey y'all, today we have a Pen Clash 8000. And this reel was was locked up. Uh, I, I know what's wrong with it because I had to order some parts for it. It's no longer locked up, but it was a mess inside. And I'll show you that in a sec, or I'll show you that throughout the video. But uh, today we're gonna uh, show you how to break this down, uh, service it and put it back together. Also do some fixes in there because it was, was pretty bad. All right, so I'm gonna start with the spool. <coughs> <clears throat> try to keep these things in sections so while I remove the spool by unscrewing that drag knob please don't forget to hit that subscribe that like button and be sure to tell your friends about the channel if you appreciate the content that I'm putting out of all right so here's a spool let's work on that first I'm not removing the clicker <clears throat> but I'm going to clean it up and add a little bit of new grease to it Just gonna grease here just around it and I don't necessarily grease the point on that uh, on the click tongue clean up inside here also all right so let's get to the top we're gonna get the drag stack out by undoing these screws here now I didn't open this so I might need to use a different screwdriver I don't like screws for for drags, but I think that's just me. <clears throat> they have a tendency to get salt water kind of leaking inside there and then uh, freezing them up inside there. <clears throat> so that's why I said that. Just comes up like that, just a plate. I'm gonna pop those screws off so I can kind of show you this drag stack as it comes out. And this is how it looks. And we got most of it out. All right, so it looks like that. You got a keyed, keyed, keyed. And then you have essentially keyed drag washers as well. I might end up replacing these things. <coughs> Alright, so I'm just going to clean these things off. Uh, I'm going to clean one off and see how it looks. And then make a determination after that. I'm just cleaning where the drag sat. <clears throat> just trying to get rid of any uh, possible de debris or contaminants that may be in there. That looks pretty good. So let's check one of these out and see what it looks like. Yeah, there's some definite wear on this one. Uh, I'm going to pause the video. Um, do a little bit of extra cleaning on this just to make sure that we can't use these or reuse them because the goal is always to limit the amount of parts that you need to replace on any reel of course All right so uh, I'll see you guys in a bit all right so I use some brake cleaner uh, fluid to clean these off and we can reuse them there's some light wear on there uh, but they should work fine <clears throat> so now I'm just gonna grease them with some cows grease and I'm only putting a light amount on this kind of brought me in on both sides and I'm gonna stick them in there as we go if you notice these things have tabs on them they're just gonna fit in those holes that are inside the spool So first, uh, metal keyed washer. Then we can put that next drag washer in, in a sec. <clears throat> I 
All right, so your next metal keyed washer, I'm sorry, your drag washer first, keyed washer, final drag washer, and that. Now I'm going to add some grease to these holes where those screws go into. That is a lot. And I won't even do that. I'm going to add some of the cow's grease on there versus using the pan grease. This way there's no cross. I don't want to say contamination, but crossing of the uh, of the greases. And I'm going to spread that around so when I put the metal plate on there, it has some level of protection against corrosion. Line those holes up and then just screw it in. Snug is fine on these. You don't need to go crazy on the tightening of them. This one had issues before. All right, so let's clean that off. All right, so next we're going to jump to the <clears throat> to the rotor, and to get that off, we're going to need to remove this handle just by unscrewing it and opening the side plate up. See if this fits here. And to get that side plate off, we're going to remove uh, three or four screws. I'm taking these off now, but I'm, there's a screw there I need to re remove as well. And these are all the same size. I hope. I hope our last screw or first screw you can take off is that one on the boot or the rub guard that just comes up like that it's a much smaller screw you can keep those things separate and these screws are the same size all right that just comes straight up just like that and I'll show you what happened inside here why the issue was what it was this reel was severely locked without hope. All right, so let's undo these two screws. Now, if I remember, I think these were different sizes. So we're gonna take our time taking these out so you can see it. That's the top one. Yep, the bottom one's shorter than the top one. Pull that shaft out. Now we can undo that lock plate by undoing this screw and removing that nut. This is a counterclockwise to remove. So essentially, I'm going to tell you a story right now. I'm going to break whatever I'm doing and <laughs> tell you a story. Uh, so what I'm doing when I'm breaking these reels down on video is I'm constantly constantly looking at what I'm doing and back at my phone to see if everything's in, in frame. Focus doesn't really matter because it, does, it doesn't go out of focus. It's just whatever. So you'll see me like do some pauses or skip or jump or do something else. It's because I'm trying to look back and forth. So it's... For little old me, it's difficult to do two, th two things at once. Any event, pull that up. If it's uh, stuck on there, you can kind of rock that as you pull it up to get it off. Let's pop this out. And I'm going to look under there to see if there's a washer. Nope. All right, cool. Okay, so let's break this rotor down. 
we're going to do that screw and that screw there. Uh, they are the same size, so no worries there in terms of getting them mixed up. I'm always trying to support these arms when I go to do remove screws on them because I don't want to add any extra stress to it. Now for this one you'll feel when you unscrew this it may pop up on you. That's just the bail tension uh, kind of releasing a little bit and pushing that bail arm away. Gently pull that up to make sure this doesn't go shooting out on you. I don't see that happen often. Uh, but I do want to point that out. Now we can remove this cover. Like so. And the greasing in here looks pretty good. I'm actually going to leave it alone. But I'll show you what it looks like. Just have those two pieces there. Yep, you can see it. And then you have this trip arm. That's there. That long end faces down towards the inside of the rotor. So when you're putting this back on, stick that back in there. Kind of angle that that uh, shaft or post there to where it's just below the trip arm. Now I'm going to hold on to this because there's a little bit of tension there. And if it slips out, then we'll just do it again. Make sure that bottom spring is set securely into the uh, into the cavity there. But when you put this plate on, that'll help keep it secure also. Duh. And then just screw it back in. I'm going to add some grease around this post and where the screw is going to go in. That should be good enough. Some there as well where it's going to go on that uh, bail arm. That looks fine as well. Just going to grease around the post and where the screw is going into. All right, so let's break down the, uh, the line roller. That's not. All right, let's pop this off. This just kind of um, turns to pull off. Right now it's coming off, but I'm uh, turning this handle, I'm sorry, the screw back and forth just to make sure I'm backing it up a little bit and going back in to make sure that I'm not uh, shredding the head off versus unscrewing it. It's still stiff all the way through. And this is a good example as to why you want to break these things down and uh, properly protect them. And this is just to be because of the uh, the glue that's on the on the screw, but sometimes you'll get a lot of corrosion in there. Like I see evidence of corrosion in that, and there's I see evidence of corrosion on that screw as well. So it's a good thing we're breaking this down. Hopefully, it just comes off, and it did. I'm gonna leave that there so you can kind of see what it looks like.
make sure those two tabs are fine. I'm going to drop some corrosion X inside there. Just to kind of help with it. All right, so here's the line roller. You have a washer or a line roller washer. You have a washer under that. That's a plastic or Teflon washer. And then you have a bearing that's inside here that we're looking for our handy dandy bearing removal tool. This may or may not come out. And this sounds bad. All right, so yet again, we have to pause this video unless I'm pulling it out the wrong side, which I don't think I am, but I might be. I'm gonna check the schematic on this and make sure that it comes out in a certain way. Okay. So this is one of the few, um, few reels that has the bearing going in from this side. I shouldn't say few. One of the few that I've worked on are going from the, from the bail wire side versus the bail arm side. All right, I'm gonna replace that bearing, so I still have to pause the video, but if you wanna watch me clean before I do that, you're more than welcome. All right, I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So I got the replacement bearing right here. I'm gonna oil that. And do a couple spins on it to let that oil kind of soak in there. Or work its way around. Now I'm gonna add some grease around this to help give it a layer of protection from the elements. also inside this line roller where that bearing is going to sit. On the post. On that receiving hole of the post. Uh, a little bit on this washer as well. As you can see we had some wear starting to build up on it. Let's check the back side of this. Uh, it looks probably okay. We're going we're to grease it anyhow. This really is just kind of light kind of coat of grease on it. And I'm definitely going to brush this off to get that corrosion off of there. So since we had some build up on there, I'm going to add some grease to the threads on that screw as well, just as a secondary measure. And now we can put things back together. Let's get that out of the way. First thing that goes on again is the bearing. The line roller sits with the cavity that holds that receives the bearing facing towards the bail wire. We can stick on our washer there, kind of like so, and then get this metal washer right over like that. That all looks good. Now this has two tabs on it and two receiving holes on the bail arm. Just set it down there and kind of gently rock it as you push down lightly until you find where it locks into place and then just screw it in. And I'm going to snug this all the way down. Not yet because obviously I need to find that groove again. And if I keep messing it up This one's a little tricky because remember we had some issues inside there. All 
Yeah, we found it. And we just lock it in. Alright, that's tight enough. And let's double check to make sure this thing rolls. And it is. Alright, good. Add some grease to this point where that uh, that piece is going to go. Angle it like this, and you can turn on like that. So now we're going to take this end, stick it inside that hole right there. Add some grease to it, and some grease around that post. I'm just going to line it up like so. Once you get it lined up, gently push as you raise up and down over the post on the rotor. And once you get it set there, just double check it to make sure it's set in place. Now I'm going to hold on to this because remember it does want to pop up on you. So I'm holding on to it with my thumb before or until I get this set all the way down. All right, let's drop this thing back on there. And that has enough greasing on it, so we're just going to set it in and screw it in. Snug it down, and the same for this side. Then double check it to make sure it works. That sounds good. While I'm here, I'm going to add some grease to certain points on here. Bottom there where the uh, pinion stack or the washer will be sitting inside the channel and on top here, kind of like around there. All right. Now essentially kind of what you guys have been waiting for. What kind of craziness happened to this reel? So. Let's pull this out. It just comes straight out, like so. I'm holding on to that support arm so it doesn't uh, lock it from coming out of there, but without luck. But we'll get it out, just like that. And I don't believe this has any notches on any ends, so you can go in either way. Yeah. This can go in either way, so that's good. Let's pull this block out. This block got sheared over here. You can see there. I kind of left these things in, inside so you can see it. Here's a sheared off piece of the block. Plus possibly another piece of the block there. I took some things out, but not all of them. Pull the main gear out already. We're going to remove this crosswind gear by undoing that screw that's in the middle there. And you got to be real careful with these screws because it's a soft metal and it's easy to strip that uh, uh, the holes on there. Pull this up if I can get it. And what we're going to see here is I believe there's a washer in here. Yep. Okay. Good. Then we're going to need to reuse that. I'm glad there was one there. All right. So this has some damage on it. I'm going to try to show it to you, but it's not, it may not be easy to see. Now I'll show you essentially what caused all the issues. So if you look right here, you'll see that groove or the chip up right there on the crosswind gear makes it not usable. The main gear, I couldn't find any issues with it, so I didn't get a new one. So fingers crossed. Here's the uh, big deal on this reel. This mini gear right here sheared off the post. So essentially we got to replace the entire housing to do this reel. 
there's a lot of teeth missing on this side so the interaction with the with the main gear seemed fine but definitely with that cross one which is up here broke that off here's the piece right there all right so now we're going to just undo every single thing in this reel and get a new housing Just taking out the plate that that crosswing uh, block rides on. And sometimes under these things you'll find a washer. So when you take these off, just pay attention to see if you see anything there. And if you do, where it came from. Not on this one, so that's good. Last things to remember. Pull this bearing out so we don't have it. Or forget it in there. <coughs> That's not good. in a sec. Alright, let's get to the top part. Let me set some of these things aside so we don't have them confusing. Keep that there. Alright, so let's do the top part. We're going to remove that, plastic, that white plastic piece there and then we're going to pop off the uh, we're going to pop off this E-clip to get that secondary dog off. The way you do that is simply twisting it off like so. Now you can pull that straight up. Be careful because there's a spring under there. You don't want to damage that. Now we have to remove that. And this is not always easy, trust me. This one loves to get frozen inside there. And that's essentially just the post for the uh, for the secondary dog. Now we can undo these three screws to remove the uh, bearing cover and trash this part. Almost, we got this <laughs> break on there as well. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah. Oh yes, that's nice. All these screws are pretty sure are the same size as well. Yep. The orientation was like this. It doesn't need a, doesn't really matter where you put it. Clean that off. Now hopefully this pulls out. Oh, nice and easy. But double check to make sure there's no bushings inside here where that that post is I don't think there is but okay now we're done with this I lied to you remove these two screws to remove that break uh, sometimes these things are glued on there so if it is we're just gonna have to work that out and glue it back down when we put it on the other side these two screws for that are the same size and let's see what we have here this one does not look like it's glued, which is perfect. Nice. Okay, so that's it for this. We're just gonna set this to the side and give it back to the customer. All right, so let's remove the pinion stack. Just the pinion gear, bearing, the anti-reverse clutch. Remove that O-ring so we don't 
damage it. Then you have a washer on top here which sits between this and the rotor. Then you have the bearing cup, so it looks like that. All right, so I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna clean up all these gears and then I'm gonna come back to you guys. Um, yeah, that's what I'll do. All right, see you guys in a bit. Okay, and we're back. Uh, this was gonna be kind of like a hodgepodge of of uh, parts going in in different orders. Uh, first, I'm gonna grease up where these bearings are gonna sit. So when I get anything kind of locking up in there, grease inside that hole. These are obviously the new parts. I'm gonna grease around that post. This is the post that sheared off as a result of whatever else happened in here. Same thing for where that cross one is gonna sit. It's kinda like that, it's fine. Some for the hole. Right there where that block is gonna ride. It's a bit much, I think, but we're gonna leave it. And I'm gonna do these holes afterwards. Now I'm gonna lather some grease inside here. That's where the pinion stack sits. And when these things get stuck in there, it is uh, not fun taking them out. So I'd rather just overdo this than to miss a spot or something. Ooh, that's a lot. Ooh. Greasing these holes also, and that one over there, especially. Uh. All right, so let's do this bumper here. And there's only one way you can go on. So let's kind of look for it and line it up like that. Remember, we had some two little short screws that went in there. To secure them. First one was here, okay. And the second one is there. You don't need to over tighten this just to help it stay down. And I wanna make sure it is. If you have some issues with these things kind of rising up on you on your, on your reel, then you could add a little bit of glue on certain points. All right, I'm gonna grease in here where that other bearing is gonna sit. That's the handle side bearing. And now we're gonna do the pinion stack. So for the pinion, you only need to grease, grease the lower portion of it, but I like to grease the entire pinion just to add some protection uh, to the metal. And it's really just a light coat that I'm putting on there. Grease those threads where that nut or the rotor nut is gonna feed onto. And I'm gonna grease this uh, bearing cup here And I'm also gonna grease the uh, sides of these uh, bearings and that anti-reverse clutch. I checked the anti-reverse already, it was fine. I just did a little bit of cleaning on it and put it back in. The inner sleeve can go either way. So you can't really get in trouble if you take it out and are not sure how to put it back in or what end goes up. I'm gonna work this grease in there. I'm sorry, this oil that I just put on these bearings. And these are sealed bearings, but the, uh, the oil still works in there. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is put the first bearing on. 
and we can stick our anthro reverse clutch on there. That cup, the next bearing. And we got a washer that was there sitting on top, so I'm gonna leave that right here, as well as that bushing that went inside the uh, channel right there. Now I'm gonna grease around here. So it's like a double, a double layer of protection, so to speak. Now we're just gonna stick this in in a sec. I'm gonna add this post before I even do that. Let me grease those threads right there on that post also. This is the post that the enter the secondary dog sits on. Just screw it in. And I do I do like to make this uh, quite snug when I get it to the bottom. That should be good. All right, so now let's stick this in. Make sure I don't miss any spots. I think we're good there. Just kind of rotate as you push down until you feel it going in. And now we're gonna cover it up. Where's my uh, bearing cover? Oh, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna add some grease around here where that O-ring is going to sit. Has two purposes. It helps add another layer of water intrusion protection, and it also helps keep this somewhat pliable. You do wanna make sure that you have that the gasket sitting flush inside the channel is supposed to go on. Grease this whole thing as well. And as you saw earlier, this can kind of go either way or in any direction. So I'm going to put it like that and screw it in. And what I have a tendency to forget here is probably that bushing. And once I put that rotor on, I have to take it off to put this back in because it doesn't fit through the top. Uh, I don't always forget this washer. <laughs> Sometimes I do. Stick that on there. And I'm gonna stick this bushing inside. So now we're good with that stuff. Now all we have left to do on the top is to add these pieces. This spring here has a straight edge and a double bent edge. Well, one bend, two bends. The single bend is gonna go down through that channel right there. So we're looking at going inside there, like so. And the double bend is facing up. Now, if you'll notice, there's a little blockage right there. There's a post on the bottom here that's gonna ride inside there. So the way to get this to sit is simply put that and the double bend edge through that channel right there on the uh, dog, have it raised slightly so you can get over that post or that channel and then go down. Now you're set in place. You wanna make sure the dog is facing out towards the rotor, but that's essentially set. We can put this on. I am not didn't remove this because I didn't wanna play with the gasket on this one. But if you did, pay attention to where it came from. This is going <laughs> to, I was going to say something else, but that was probably the best advice. Uh, <laughs> there's a little hole right here that we want to get. There's a metal spring under here that goes through there. So if you do take it apart, you want to get that metal spring or that raised end back through that hole. Let me add some grease on the inside here and stick this on. All 
All right, so the way it's gonna sit is just like that, but you wanna make sure that gap right there fits over the dog like so. Is it there? It's not there, sorry. Like that. <laughs> okay, that's it. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something somewhere. Yeah, my E-clip. I'm gonna pull this off because I don't wanna damage this. I missed my E-clip for this. Sorry about that. The E-clip is gonna secure that dog so it doesn't move around or slip up. I'm gonna set it there like that and just pop it on. That's set. Okay, so you saw I did this already. So I'm just gonna do it a little quicker than I did last time. Maybe not. Now we can set this rotor on there. And I'm gonna double check one more time to make sure there's nothing missing and we are good. Okay. On that goes. It's key, so you kind of gotta find the uh, the groove for it, and I could put that in. Awesome. Some of these reels I can't. It it doesn't fit over. If I don't know, I can't explain it, but it doesn't matter. Stick the washer on. This is also keyed. Now we're just gonna secure with the screw, or with the nut. Sorry. And where's my hole? Okay, that's not right yet. I'm gonna snug it down to about there. That should be good for it. Make sure I didn't do it too tight. If you just tighten that nut down too much, you can obviously damage that stack that's in there, so be careful. That should be close to right. Yep. Put the lock plate on and then secure it with the screw. All right, let me make a note on something here. So now I'm going to grease up all these gears, uh, the block, and the main gear. I'm going to oil these bearings so they can kind of let the oil kind of soak in while I'm doing that. That should be good enough. And I'm going to stick this plate on there so I don't forget it. Keep track of your screws so you know which one goes where or, or for what purpose. A lot of these screws can be interchangeable but uh, are seemingly interchangeable but they're really not. So you do want to keep track of them. All right, let's breeze. be light amount of grease on everything. So it's gonna be kind of like a partial kind of greasing. I'm gonna grease in there, that channel. I like to add a little bit of extra grease to that post that sits on the crosswind gear. But I do grease all the surface area of it, meaning the gears. A decent amount of grease in that channel for the block. And a light amount of grease around the rest of it.
Trying to get some grease in that hole where that post is going to go, where that uh, guide is going to go. Same kind of deal for the uh, main gear. All right, let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, we're gonna do our shaft now. Clean that off pretty good. And I don't, I'm not gonna add any grease to here, but I'm gonna grease this bottom part and oil that bearing on top. If you wanted to remove this bearing, there's a little uh, clip on here that is tricky to get off, but you just gotta remove one of those points, kind of like that, and then work it up. I'm gonna leave it set in there. But you do need to remove that if you want to remove that thrust washer. I, I maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Let's find out. Yeah, it looks like you do. No, you can probably get it off without doing that, without removing the bearing. All right, so let's squeeze these points here, bottom. And here where it's going to sit inside the block. That's it. Okay. So the first thing that's going to go in is one of these bearings. Just like so. Made that sound easy when I said it right. fit <laughs> did we get these bearings wrong uh, I don't think so it is a new housing though so we'll try a different one checking my clearance on there it looks fine Make sure it's all the way down. All right, so next would be this gear. Crosswind. Where's our bushing for that? Stick that in there. Then we can screw this in. like to the bottom there somewhere. Now I'm going to stick the block on like so. Let's see if I can work that up. Good. I kind of want it like around there somewhere. Add a little bit of grease to right there and I'm going to add some grease right here to the hole where that post is going to go through or that guide so it can transfer onto the guide. Here it goes. I'm going to rest this down so I can work with two hands. And that's going to go in that receiving uh, gap at the end there, like that. Now I'm going to work this back down by doing this versus pulling it down because I'm going to pull that out. Right there is good. Alright, so now we can stick our main gear in. I'm trying to line everything up before it goes in. So I'm just kind of turning that to make sure it kind of finds the right groove to go into. Stick our shim washers on there. And now we can stick the shaft through to secure it. Uh, the way the shaft is going to sit is I think either end can go in facing up. So we should be fine there. And for these, remember that the longer screw was at the bottom, I'm sorry, at the top, and the shorter one was at the bottom. And if that's not right, leave a comment. I'm 
pretty sure I was right. Feels right. We're gonna find out. All right. Now we're almost done. All we have left to do is the handle, and then we'll be in business. I'm gonna stick this bearing on there. And now let's put this cover on. And I'm making sure that there's nothing else missing. Good. Cover goes on. Ah, yep, we know what we didn't do yet. Hold on one second. So we're gonna do this afterwards. So I'm gonna grease those holes where the screw's gonna sit as well as where the posts on the uh, side house cover is, are gonna go. Where'd I put it? All right. On with it it goes. And I'm gonna squeeze this tight right here and just kind of feel the rotation. I think we got lucky. Not lucky, just an educated guess as to what gears needed to be changed out. Okay. Let's go ahead and screw this stuff down. We'll do a little test afterwards just to make sure. So we got the three longer screws going up in these three holes here, and then that bottom plate will take the shorter screw. gentle turn with the screwdriver about an eighth I want to feel this now that feels fine it's gonna go on like this we're gonna squeeze that hole right there where the screw is gonna sit obviously only fits one way so Don't over tighten this, could break that. All right, so let's do the handle. Handle's pretty clean, so there's not a lot going on here. I will show you how to open up, well maybe I will, how to open up this top knob part. And we'll get that on in a sec. Grease inside there, just around it. Grease the threads. And let's see here, let me grab my, I use a divot tool to remove that. You can use a quarter or something. And it just unscrews. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to kind of access inside there so we can add some oil to it. No other reason, but if you want to change this knob out, uh, that's another way, obviously, you'll get it done. Add some grease, I'm sorry, some oil to that bearing there. Add some oil here, hopefully that works in. Then just spin it. Multiple directions. And that's good enough. I'm going to add some grease to the threads on this. I think I was out of frame there, guys, I apologize. Some grease to the frame, I'm sorry, to the threads on this. And just screw it back in. And snug is good. You don't need to over tighten this. It just makes a depression if you do. 
All right, so let's take this handle in and then wipe off any excess grease that we have. Let's screw this bearing cover in. And we're gonna put the, uh, the spool on, test this reel out and make sure everything's working fine. Uh, one thing I did not do was uh, grease the ramp on the inside. It's not necessary, but I tend to do it more often than not, or most of the time, let's say that. I'm gonna add some grease around that bearing right there. And that's because I don't wanna get them frozen inside the uh, that hole. Line it up right till you hear that sound. Add some grease to the threads up here. And let's stick our drag knob on and test this baby out. All right, let's see how it feels. All right. We saved a reel for a minimal amount of cost, or a minimal cost. Could have been a lot worse. The, the main gear could have been uh, damaged beyond repair, or damaged to the point where I needed to replace it, and some other stuff could have gotten you know, damaged in there as well. It was still fairly expensive to replace these parts, but not near as bad as it could have been. The, the main gear, and this is like, I think it's 50 bucks, 60 bucks, somewhere around there. It's pretty expensive. All right, guys. So that's how you take it apart, service, and put back together a Pen Clash 8000. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe, hit that like button, tell your friends about the channel if you appreciate the content. And with that, I will see you guys next time.